And when you smile for a camera, I know I love you better. That's it, that's it, that's all. I slapped myself in the face twice hard. I'm never gonna another chance to do those jokes or interview that person or be present for the audience. Because first you gotta be present for the audience and see them and let them see you. And that's, and the rule is I have to slap myself hard enough that I wish I hadn't. I might call Jon Stewart. I wish I had more discipline. I work hard, but that's not the same thing as discipline. I tend to work hard to throw myself at the times when I've been undisciplined, to make up for it. I'm a great making up for it, but that fools me into thinking that, oh, that's a fine way to live. Go for a walk helps a lot. It's like a prayer. It's meditation. It's probably Steve Martin. Or, you know, yeah, probably Steve Martin. Two peanuts were walking down the street, and one was assaulted. That's it. It's a sad story, but it's true. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> I don't know if this is right, but the first thing that occurs to me is listening. When I used to teach improv, what I would say is, you're not the most important person on the stage. The other people on stage are. That has something to do with love. Nothing is possible to be made beautiful without some love. And so I think as a performer, you've got to pay attention. And that's a, a way of honoring and loving the other person on stage. Maybe humility. And that leads to listening. And it leads to the ability to change your mind. I'm not saying I possess it. I'm, I promise you, I can accuse myself. You know what? Maybe courage. Maybe courage, because without that one, no other virtues are possible. <laughs> My philosophy of life, don't be a dick. Just don't. I bet Da Vinci would be fun. I mean, he's pretty eclectic. I mean, the Bible. I'm a Catholic, but I'm not saying it for religious purposes. And pardon the expression, in a Western context, there is almost nothing from about the fourth century on that isn't influenced by that book. Regardless of whether the book means anything to you, you should read it to know what all those other writers were talking about or what their frame of reference was. I was deeply depressed when I was in college. I lost 50 pounds my freshman year. I was green. It was terrible. Also, my girlfriend broke up with me. I couldn't think of a reason to get up in the morning. Literally didn't get out of bed for a week once. And I went for a run with my dear friend, Chip Hill. And he stopped me for a second, sat me down. I remember the sun was going down. We were both kind of breathing hard. And he looked at me and he said, you're enough. You're enough. Don't worry about it. I mean, I'm a bundle of anxiety. I've got like a cheesecake factory menu of things I'm afraid of in my head. If I had to get up and go, it would be New Zealand. You go there and it feels like the world 60 years ago before things, or 70 years ago, before things went truly crazy. I, probably the, the things that I agreed with my old character. The, the moments when I was doing the Colbert Report and the things I was saying that he said that I meant, that might surprise some people. In even good restaurants, sometimes they'll serve shrimp with the tail still on in a sauce. And what is that about? Am I supposed to put down the fork and the knife, go in there, roll up my sleeves, go in there, get the shrimp, and pull off the damn tails by myself, and then ask for a, 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 a wet nap? It's ridiculous. It's a Shonda.